Hi, dear students. Welcome to statistics class. This is our module two, topic three, measures of dispersion and their descriptive measures. Last topic, we have talked about the measures of location or central tendency, and you've learned that it will give us a typical value of our data set. So today, we'll be learning and talking about the measures of dispersion. Why it's so important? Because we need to be able to understand how the degree to which data values are spread out in a distribution. And through these measures of dispersion, it will determine the nature and cost of variation. For example, you have a greater variability and then when you look at your data set, why I have a mean like this? Why I have a greater variability? It is because of your outlier. Outlier means the extreme values. So through this, you'll be able to determine the cost of variations. And while central tendency tells you where most of your data lies or your data points lies, variability summarizes how far apart your points from each other. For example, in the mean, you will have a single value, but you don't know about the other data points. How far are they from the mean? So this variability or dispersion will give you an idea of how far apart from each other your points are in your data set. So let's define it. So a quantity that describes the spread or variability of the observations in a given data set. And remember that the higher the value, the greater the variability in the data set. And there are some common measures. We have the range, the interquartile range, the variance, the standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation. This coefficient of variation is really important in the experimental researches, especially for agriculture and biology. So these types of dispersion are also grouped so they are, there are absolute measures of dispersion and under which are the range, the interquartile range, the variance, the standard deviation. And the relative measures of dispersion, we have the coefficient of variation or we just, we can call it as CV. So range, so let's define it. The difference between the maximum and the minimum values in a data set. Last topic, we've talked about what is the maximum value, what's the minimum value by their definition. So when you compute for the range, it's just the difference between the maximum and the minimum value. And the range is the difference between the largest and the smallest number in the set. Okay, so the range, there are some critics that the range is not a very useful measure of variation as it only uses two values of the data. Because as I've said, you just have to take the maximum and the minimum value. But how about the data points in between them? How far are they from each other? So that's one of the critic in using the range. But still it is useful or it's still one of the measures of variation. So other measures of variation will, uh, that we'll be talking about later will be more useful as they are computed by using every data value. Unlike the range, we, are can, we can only use the maximum and the minimum value. Okay, for example, the life expectancy in the Human Development Index in the United Nations Human Development Report and the man that lived the longest in the Bible. So the maximum value is Methuselah is 969 years old. And the minimum, or this is the life expectancy of today's or today's time. We have 70 years old, the average lifespan or the life expectancy. So to compute for the range, you just have to 
subtract 969 minus 70. So that is the range uh, 899. But we don't know how about the generations from the other time. So how far are they from, for example, from our, our life expectancy of today? So this range can only cater the maximum value and the minimum value without the idea of the values in between or the other values. Okay, so that, that's how you compute for the range. So it's just so easy. So let's proceed. So some properties of the range, it is quick and easy to understand because it will, it will only use two values, the maximum and the minimum. And it is a rough measure of this portion. It is usually reported together with the median for you to know the middle value. And before we proceed to variance, let's compute for the deviation from the mean. Let's define it first. The deviation from the word, deviation from the mean. The mean that I'm talking about is the arithmetic mean that we have computed in the previous topic in the central tendency. So deviation, that means is the distance from or away from the mean. Okay, for example, you in your data values, you have a mean of 85 and then in 85 the mean grade of your classmates and then what is the deviation of student one to the mean so that is the deviation from the mean then it's just like the range however you are using the mean and the observed value so let's define it so the deviation from the mean is found by subtracting the mean of our set of data from the given observation. For the finite population, x1, x2, until xn, the deviations are observed value, uh, first observed value minus the population mean, the second value minus the population mean, so on until our nth observation. So if we have the sample, then we can use the X bar instead of our population mean or the mu. So note that the sum of the deviations from the mean is zero for any set of data. And that is the principle already. Now let's proceed to variance. The variance usually use this sigma squared. The small letter for this sigma, shaped like this, and then squared. So the average square difference of the observations from the mean. Last time, in the previous slide, we've talked the, about the division from the mean. So the variance, since it will always end up to zero, the division from the mean will always be zero. So to circumvent this problem, statisticians and mathematicians formulated this variance. So before they sum it or they, uh, they add it up together, they square it first. The deviation, you can see here, it's like a deviation from the mean. And then one observation and then minus or subtracted to the mean and then squared it. So that becomes the variance divided by n. And then where uh, xi is the ith observation and the data set, mu is the population mean of the data set, and n is the total number of observations on the data set, or n is the population size. So this is our second measure of this uh, my second measure of dispersion, the variance. Okay, let's proceed. So we have here the var sample variance. Whenever you see this S squared, this would signify that my data came from a sample. Okay, it's just a sample variance. Whereas if you use the sigma, then that is the population variance. So this is the formula for our sample variance. S squared is equal to summation of xi minus x bar 
squared where i ranges from 1 to n over n minus 1. So remember or take note, this is our formula 2.3.2. That means it is for our module 2, topic 3, second formula. Okay, that is our notation. So, so that you will not easily forget it. Remember, this coding is module 2, topic 3, second formula. Okay, so where xi is equal to i of observation and the data set, and x bar is the sample mean of the data set, and n is the total sample number of observations in the data set or the sample size. So that is our sample variance. Okay, what are some properties of the variance? So one of the most useful measures of dispersion because you, every value or every data point has its own contribution to the value of your variance. So all observations contribute to the computations. And remember, it is always non-negative. So whenever you have an answer of negative, in computing your variance, I tell you, check your computation again. So comes in the square of the unit of measure of the given set of values. Okay, for example, this is the area planted for Dorian by region in the Philippines last 2015, according to Philippine Statistics Authority. So I know that most of the CPAs love Dorian, so I took this data. So let's compute for our population variance, okay? Let me read it from car region. We have the zero. That means there is no Dorian in that area. And then only one hectare. Remember, this is in hectare unit. In region one, four hectares. In region two, four hectares. In region three, 37 hectares. In region four, A. I think that's Calabar zone. And then Mimarupa region 45 hectares region 5 or Bicol there is no record or oh, there's no Dorian in there and then Western Visayas is 171 hectares Central Visayas is 24 hectares region 8 is 32 hectares region 9 is 1091 hectares region 10 is 1423 hectares Region C, uh, region 11 is 8,330. I think it's in Davao. So now you have an idea of what place there's a lot of area planted for Dorian. And then region 12 is 2,202 hectares. Region 8, I uh, 13 is 1,935 and B A R M M. Bangsang Moro administrative something like that region 1314.75 hectares so using this uh, data the total hectares is 16613.75 hectares are the area planted for Dorian in the Philippines so using the same data we have also the mean of 1000 38.4 okay that is the mean the average or the arithmetic mean for area planted so how do we compute for or for population variance okay this is our data this is our formula remember this in our formula module 2 topic 3 a uh, module 2 topic 3 Formula 1 is our variance, the population variance is the summation of x, i, minus mu squared. I, we use the mu because we're talking about the national data and then over the population size. Total, we have the population size of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 
uh, that's the number of regions in the Philippines, or 16 rather. And now, to compute using this formula, xi, this is our first observation, it is 0, and then minus the population mean, 1038.4, and then square. So, where do we get that mean, or the population mean here in our computation? 1038.4 and then open close parenthesis square it and then plus since you can see here the summation notation or the principle that we've learned in the module one and then one because the region one is have only one hectare minus our population mean and then square and then four because the region two is four hectares uh, minus subtract to our mean, then so on and so forth until we finish all uh, the regions. So we can see there the, the ellipses. So until BARMM region. So divided by, because we have the sample size, or population size rather, we have the 16 regions in the Philippines. Okay, so computing it with your calculator or your Excel, you will arrive to this value. Okay, so that is 65,708,931.50 over 16. So our variance is like this. The value is... 41086808.219. That is our variance. And if you square it for the standard deviation, you just square it, which we will be learning after this, this slides, this uh, slides after this. And then so i think that's how you just compute your variance it's just so easy right oh this is our population standard deviation okay so here's the third measure of dispersion so standard deviation gives more clarity about the deviation of data from a mean for example whether a reporter is analyzing the high temperature forecasted for two different cities, a low standard deviation would show a reliable weather forecast. So this is important in your researches, in your especially the experimental and as well as for social researches, to see the reliability. What's the use of learning something if it's not reliable after all? Even if you will introduce something, for example, the vaccine, if it's not reliable, there is inconsistency, so it's so dangerous. So that's why in experimental researches, it's important to tell or to project to present the standard deviation. So let's proceed. Standard deviation, they use the sigma. Remember the population variance, you just put the square there. But if it's standard deviation, you just use the sigma. This is for population standard deviation or SD to make it short or S. Okay, so the average deviation of the observations from the mean. And then it is the positive square root of the variance, just like what we did in the previous slide. We just squared it, and uh, I took, I mean, the square, or you get the square root of that. And then the unit measure is the same as that of the observations, because in standard deviations, you are squaring each value. But your original data is not squared. So to circumvent these issues, mathematicians and statisticians just employ this principle to get the square root to bring it to the same unit measure just like, the, just like what we have in the original data or in our observation. And it is usually reported with the mean. 
the measures of variations of the scores about the mean. So why do we need this? Why not use the, uh, the variance? Because the standard deviation, as I've said, it is unitless and it will make and it makes much easier to work with and easy to interpret in conjunction with the concept of the normal curve. So the same units as the original values. That's why researchers or if you are analysts, you can easily determine the variability of your data by just looking the standard deviation. The lower the standard deviation, the reliable, but the higher it is, it's not that reliable. But depending on your subject, on your discipline, because for medicine, it's they really need to have a very minimal standard deviation. And there are tolerable, and then for some they will accept the higher standard deviation depending on your subject. Okay, so recall our sample variance in our formula 2.3.2. S squared is equal to summation of xi minus x bar squared where i ranges from 1 to n over n minus 1. So why do we use this n minus 1? They call it as the degree of freedom okay and then to get the square root just transpose it to get the standard deviation that would become our formula 2.3.2.3.3 point .3. and if you want to have a shortcut formula if you're just using your calculator you can use this square root of n this is our sample size open parenthesis summation of xi squared meaning you square each values and then you sum it, then multiply it to n minus the summation of xi, where i ranges from 1 to n. You sum every data values and then you square it over n or sample size times n minus 1. And that becomes our formula 2.3.4. Okay, using the previous example, like the areas planted with Dorian in the Philippines, assuming that the data to be a random sample, we have here our formula 2.3.3. .3. And then this is our standard deviation and this is our sample variance. So to compute for our uh, sample variance we have here zero the same process zero since this is the value in the first region and the mean and then squared so on until the bar region and then for the sample variance 16 minus 1 okay and then s squared you sum it you will you will arrive in this value divided by 15 and then you get the square root and then you will have the standard deviation of 2092.9872 so during our online class i will teach you how to use your scientific calculator Okay, so using the shortcut formula with the same data in the previous example. So we have here the sample size, 16, and then summation of xi, you square it, summation of xi squared, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 4 squared is 16, 4 squared is 16, 37 squared is 1,369, so on all of the region. So... The sum of that, before uh, you square that first and then you sum it. That's why we substitute this value, this here, because it is the summation of xi. Here, this is our xi. Summation of xi squared minus 
the summation of xi. So the total 16,613 16, squared over 16 times 15. So in the end, we can get the value of 2,992. So it's the same as we have using the formula 2.2.3 in the previous slide. Okay, so these are the simple symbols for standard deviation. If you're talking about the sample, in some textbook, you can get the S, and then for population, the sigma. In some graphics calculator, they use the SX, and then some graphics calculator as well as the sigma X, and then some non-graphics calculator, they use the X, sigma, then subscript of N minus 1. N minus 1 is it signifies or uh, represents the sample because in the denominator we have the n minus 1 as our degrees of freedom and then x sigma n so for articles and professional journals and reports often use standard deviations for standard deviation use sd these are the uh, shortcut and var for variance. So now let's proceed to the fourth measure of dispersion, the coefficient of variation. The CV is really present in the experimental researches, especially for agriculture and biology. And so it is the relative measures that indicate the magnitude of variation relative to the magnitude of the mean expressed in percent denoted as CV. So you compute first your variance over the mean multiplied to 100. And this becomes our formula, module 2, topic 3, fifth formula. So remember this, coefficient of variation. So instead of saying coefficient of variation to shorten it, I will just say CV and I'm talking about the coefficient of variation. Okay, so some properties of CV, it is unitless as well. And it is used to compare dispersion of two or more data sets with the same or different units. So the higher the CV, the more variable is the data set relative to its mean. So for experimental researches, CV indicates the degree of precision with which the treatments are compared and is a good index of reliability of the experiment according to Gomez. I've given this textbook to you in our iLearn. So example, to compute your CV, such as sigma or population, standard deviation or sample standard deviation over our mean times or multiplied to 100. So using our previous formula, we have there our population variance of 2,206 divided by our mean times 100. So our CV, our coefficient of variation is 195. So remember, the higher the CV, the less reliable it is. But depending on your subject and the subject of your study. So before we end, let's remember this verse. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9. Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love and keep his commandments. So remember, our God is constant. He is not changing. And he is not deviating to his promises for us. So let's not also deviate our promise that we will be faithful as we are waiting for God's soon return. God bless you on your next topic.